Hey, John Stevenson here, the Guarantee Retirement Guy, and I want to talk to you about different indexes and different index strategies that you can use for a fixed index annuity and maybe which ones would be better for you. So when you're thinking about putting money into a fixed index annuity, you have a ton of indexes to choose from. And these indexes are all over the place. You got S&P, you got NASDAQ, you got uh, Fidelity, Multifactor, you've got uh, a lot of different global and, and just different indexes that you can follow and it can be hard to decide which one works. Well, guess what? You're in luck because I have access to all of them and I'm gonna show them to you right now. So I'm gonna show you different allocation strategies, um, different ways to diversify. And remember, you're not actually in the market, okay? We're not actually investing in the stock market. With index annuities, you are tied to an index, but what the insurance company do, what the insurance company is doing is that they are actually purchasing call options associated with these indexes, hoping that it'll go up. And of course, if it does go up, they exercise those options and they experience uh, growth and so do you. So it allows you to have growth in your annuity and at the same time protect it against market loss because of course if the market drops, the worst that happens is they just let the options expire worthless. So I'm sharing my screen and I wanna show you exactly what these can look like. And so what I did is I'm just pulling up um, just some different index strategies and you'll, you'll notice that one of them is Mass Mutual Ascend which is an A++ company, they're, they're a terrific company uh, and that's just, that's just one. There's a, there's a lot of different companies we can look at but I wanted to at least give you an idea of what these look like. So rate of returns, you can see rate of returns for the highest one is 6.85. And that's just because it's in the S&P 500 point to point um, with a 10% cap. And it has a seven year lock on that cap, which means that uh, during seven years, um, they're not going to reduce that cap. So that cap is going to stay at 10% uh, for, for each of those seven years. And so they're just going to measure what the index does during each one year period, one you know period, point to point. So if you put money into an annuity with this index in January, then at the it would just measure from January all the way through December, and then it would credit your account whatever that index earned during that period. And then it starts all over the year after that. And of course, since this has a seven year lock on that cap, you know that uh, you can earn up to 10% every single year. Just depends on what the, what the S&P does. And of course, that is why this is showing such a higher rate of return because it's, um, it's only in the S&P. It's not diversified whatsoever. If you notice that there is a little bit smaller rate of return for the, uh, the, for the same index, the only difference there is there's not a seven-year cap. Uh, sorry, seven year lock on that cap, which means they can change that cap every year. So anytime they want at each every year interval. So since it's a one year index point to point, um, they're going to adjust the cap. Then maybe one year it'll be 10, one year it'll be nine, one year it'll be 11, one year it'll be six. You just never know. And that's all dependent on what the cost of the options are. The more expensive the options, typically the lower the cap. So, uh, and then you'll see this one, this next one here, a 6.84% return because they've got 90% of it in that, in that uh, you know, seven-year lock for that 10% cap, and then they got 10% in, in, in one that doesn't have that lock, and so it could fluctuate. So there's a lot of different things you can do, and, and you can see different rates of returns uh, correlated with, with uh, how much you put in each of those indexes. See, 6.81, 6.78, 6.82, um, they're all pretty darn close. If you want to get really diversified, you can go all the way down to here and you can put them in all these different types of S&Ps with caps, with a seven year lock, with a, um, let's see, um, participation rates. You've got real estate, you got one year ice shares, US real estate cap, you got the gold. So a lot of different stuff you could do in here. It's very, very diversified. So if you know certain things happen in different parts of the market and uh, uh, certain businesses go out of, you know, they, they go bankrupt while others flourish. This kind of allows you to diversify so you're not hit as hard. Um, but again, you're not losing any money uh, when the market drops because you're not actually in the market. So usually people like to earn as much as they can. And so I would say if you're going to diversify, diversify only among like maybe two of the top, maybe two or three. 
uh, if you're looking for as much growth as possible. Look at the different indexes we've got. So when we look at index annuities, we're looking at lots of different indexes. And uh, and if you want an income rider, if you want guaranteed income, that's a whole nother animal. Right now, we're just talking about growth. And so you can see year to date, a lot of these indexes have done quite well. They're all in double digits. In fact, the technology sector is do doing 54%. And yes, you, you've seen that correctly. There are some years where you can get some really decent growth. Now, three years, of course, it's not as high. Five years, actually five years is a, is a kind of sweet spot for the tech set, uh, sector as well. Um, 2022, well, everything went down 22. We know what happened then. Um, so not a great year for growth. But uh, but yeah, so this kind of gives you an idea of what's, what some of these have done. 10 years, I kind of like 10 years because that gives you more modest growth of what some of these indexes have done. And you can see NASDAQ's done 7.49. Um, you know, lots of different indexes to choose from. Lots. I mean, hundreds, right? So, and this is just uh, showing me which ones have earned more than others. Usually the ones that earn the most are at the top. And so we can allocate on these. Um, okay, so let's go into here and let's see what else we can look at. We'll just say, all right, let's say we're looking at, let's see, there's so many different, uh, Corbridge has some good growth. Let's take a look at them. And we'll just say the, the 10. All right. So looking at this, see the top allocation is earning around 12% on average. And then down from there as it, as it diversifies. Even the lowest diversification, though, is, is, uh, is pretty darn good, 9.78. Uh, so you'll notice there are fees for some of these. See, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. This is for specific indexes that are giving you either a very, very high cap or like on these, it looks like they're giving you 170% participation rate, which means if the index does 10%, they're going to give you um, 17%, which is pretty cool. They're able to do that because they're able to get options very, very cheap. And so they're able to give you more growth, but at the same time, they're charging you a fee for it. So you don't have to choose ones uh, with a fee. In fact, you can, you can keep everything out um, you can say only no fee accounts. We don't want any fees whatsoever. All right. Well, there you go. So the best allocation with Corbridge or AIG um, is 9.32. And then if you want to diversify a little bit more, we're now in the 8, you know, 8.92. And then the lowest is 7.67 um, average return. And all of these, you see, you have participation rates. You got caps. Participation rates are just giving you a certain amount of participation for that term, that that uh, point to point term. So if it's a two year index, you see the two year um, allocation. Uh, it's just going to measure the index for that two years, and that's why they're giving you a huge uh, participation rate in there. Um, and then you've got the one years, which which you know they're just going to measure that one year. Keep in mind at the end of these terms, either the one or the two or even three year terms, they will reset the the cap rates. Uh, and also the participation rates, which, which will affect the growth. And so if, you, if you're if you looking for maybe more stable, more long-term, where, where it can't be reset every year, then um, let's see here. We'll just go into Performance Analyzer, and I'll just look at just the top growth. And it shows you, I mean, it shows you some some ones that are like 10 years locked in. Here's a, here's a good example. Um, gives you a participation rate of 550%, which means that the index says 10%, they're going to give you 55%, okay? The index says 5%, they're going to give you over 25%. Uh, and 10 years locked in, all that means is they're going to lock in that participation rate, which means that 550% is what is going to be locked in, even though this is this is measuring just three years of the Credit Suisse. Um, that, you know, every three years, they'll credit whatever it's earned um, multiplied by 550%. So that's how that looks. Um, I typically like, I mean, that is nice to have it, have it cover over three year, but I like to have some one year in there as well, just because I like to earn interest every year if possible. So you can see there are some ones here that'll give you 185% participation rate, but you see that account fee of 1.5. So there's so many different things we can look at. We can say, all right, well, we don't want any fees, okay? We don't want any fees at all. And reset periods. Let's say I, I don't want it to reset for seven years, which means I want my participation rate or my cap to stay the same every single year. So if I look at that, then I'm seeing some of these 
that are, wow, you know, 425% and it resets every seven years. But that's measuring seven years. So if it goes up really, really hard six years and then it drops the seventh year where it goes back to where you began, you earn nothing. So again, that's why I like if it's a one year, you're earning every single year for those six years. And it just keeps banking that interest every single year. It drops that interest in your account and you grow. So that's pretty nice. And then if on the seventh year you earn nothing, at least you locked in all the, those other years. So I do like, I do like locking in um, the reset period. But let me just, let's see here if we can find any... Oh, let's see here. Okay. I'll show you Mass Mutual Ascend just because they're giving you a lot of one years and it's with the S&P. So it's very easy for people to understand and uh, grasp. So Mass Mutual Ascend, I mean, it's, Mass Mutual is a great company, A++. Okay. So um, no worries there. You'll notice the cap here for the top one is 10%, seven years locked in. So that means they're going to give you up to 10%, okay? If the index earns 10% every single year for seven years, that's what you're gonna get. Um, it's very simple. The reset is annual. So what that means is every single year, you're going to get, well, the reset, still, it's still gonna be a 10% because that's seven years locked in. But the nice thing is it's a point to point for one year, which means they're gonna measure the index for one year. You're gonna get the growth for that year. So if you got 100 grand, you get 10% growth, it's gonna drop in 10,000. Now you got 110,000 working for you the next period and so on. So that's what I like about that is you're able to lock in that participation or that cap rate for a lot longer without having to worry about it being reset to a lower rate in a year or two. So, and at the same time, I'm doing a, I'm measuring a one year point to point, uh, which is allowing me to earn interest uh, uh, more frequently. Okay, and then you got all these different ones. You've got uh, lots of different, uh, you got a cap at 8%, which is not locked in um, for, uh, but it's got 10 surrender years, it's 10 surrender, it's 10 years for surrender charge. This one has a seven year surrender charge, which means if you take out more than the 10%, they're gonna charge you a surrender charge. So if you want something that's shorter, and that's great. Um, but if you want something that's like, you know, maybe 10 years, they're gonna give you an 8% cap. And um, and that's not bad either, but the average overall return on that's not so great compared to some of these higher ones. So um, there's just, there's so many different options to look at. So typically what I'll do is, is I'll come in here and when people are looking for just the highest growth possible, then I'll just kind of start here and I'll say, all right, well, what do we got here? We've got uh, all these different uh, indexes, but you know, if you don't want any fees, fine, we can take away the fees and say which ones are earning the most for that. But, but let's say we don't want any B-rated companies. We don't have to, we don't have to have any B-rated. We can uh, go in here and say at least an A minus. And so then we're seeing nationwide F and G, North American, you can see average growth for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. But, uh, you know, if you're thinking, I'm just, just thinking here, uh, reset periods, you know, I want seven, eight, 10 years, you know, then it'll start, start really narrowing it down. Well, it doesn't give me very many. <laughs> um, so what I would do is just say, Let's say we'll do reset periods. We'll just, just do annuals. Annual resets, that's all we want is one year, and that's it. Um, we don't want any spreads. We don't want any fees. There we go. And so that's looking pretty nice. So we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of decent growth rates right here. So that's typically what I look at. You're looking for annuities that will give you growth, and you're trying to figure out what index to look at. That's what we're going to go over. We're going to look at an annuity contract that's, of course, going to protect you against market risk. So if the market's going down, you know you're not going to lose anything. But at the same time, we also want to look at your time horizon. How quickly do you want this money back into your hands? How long can you lock it up? I mean, you could still take it all out, but you're subject to surrender charges. So we want to make sure that we protect you from that and, and make sure that you're in the right indexes to get you as much growth as possible, but also not lock your money up longer than you want it to be locked up. And at the same time, being able to get you a, um, if possible, a, uh, a rate lock, you know, a, a, a cap rate lock or a participation rate that is that basically guaranteed not to go down 
during the term. And so you can get as much of the growth as you possibly can. So lots of things to think about. And these things change all the time. But I wanted to show this to you just so you can kind of see the process that I go through when I look at trying to help my clients earn as much money as possible because it's your money and you should have access to all the indexes. And a lot of times you're shown something by one company from one agent and you have no idea if it's the best one. And more than likely it's not. And sometimes the agent doesn't know, know what they're talking about or they have access to only one product or two products or three. And since they know those really, really well, they'll only sell those. And the problem is, is you're, you're not being shown everything. And if there's something out there that's better and you don't know about it and you find out about it a year later, you're going to be pretty, pretty mad, pretty uh, messed up over it. So I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure that you can actually see what is happening in the market uh, with these indexes and and what it can do for you. So index annuities can be very effective, obviously protecting our money against market loss, but, but also it gets very effective for growth and for uh, building your legacy and of course, building your own wealth. So you just have to know which indexes to uh, put in there and which companies to do it with. If you're looking for a top annuity expert that has access to everything, I'm your guy. So happy to chat with you. Just go ahead and book a call. You'll notice that there is a link down below this video and we can chat some more. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I know it's kind of long. I try to keep these short, but I really wanted to just explore a lot of different options uh, on this video so you could see uh, what it looks like. So from my end, and of course, what it will look like when we, when we meet together. So anyways, if that makes sense. Go ahead and book a call and look forward to chatting with you then. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.